Well, hello and welcome to This Redeemed Life. And this is Marion Jordan Ellis. And it's my pleasure to welcome you here. If you are new to our show, here's what we're about. We want to equip you to know the word of God. Why? Because we want you to love Jesus. And most of all, I want to help you uh, as we explore the word of God to live for God's glory. And we do that by really digging in verse by verse into scripture. And I'm so thrilled uh, today. We're actually starting a brand new book of the Bible. We're going to be looking through the gospel of Mark. I cannot tell you how many weeks or episodes we're going to be here because we're just going to follow the spirits leading. And we're going to just take this verse by verse as we go. But here's the thing. I love Jesus. Jesus transformed my life. I was a wreck. I was a mess and God rescued me. And that's uh, who we see in this gospel. We see that Jesus, the God who comes to our rescue. And I love that. And I love what I've learned about uh, the person that God used to pen these words. And we're going to look a little bit at who John Mark is today, but just as an introduction, uh, let me just say that one of my desires is to be kind of a guide. Um, recently, I took my, uh, our family went to Europe for spring break, my oldest bonus boy. If you don't know, I'm a stepmom. I have two bonus boys. I also have my own daughter, Sydney. Uh, we have a blended family. It's God's just miracle in the making. And um, so our oldest is going to college. And for his senior trip, we went to Italy because he loves history. And for me, I love to learn. And so when we were going to these places, I wanted to make sure we had a tour guide in every place because, you know, you could be staring at a rock and it's just a rock unless someone tells you, oh, on this place, Julius Caesar did this. And then it comes to life or that building just looks like an old building until someone tells you the history and all of the events that took place there. And so as we journey through the New Testament, as we go through the gospel of Mark, Mark, what I want to do is kind of stop and draw your attention to a few things uh, that I hope will help you appreciate more what Mark is trying to tell us about Jesus, but also to fuel you uh, in your own love for the Lord. I really have this desire as I was thinking about what to teach next. If you've been with us through the podcast, you know, we just wrapped up a study of Ephesians and I really wanted to come back and just really look at Jesus uh, because. I see in our culture, I see in the media, I see a lot of people speaking for Jesus. I see a lot of people saying what Jesus would have thought or believed. And I saw, I see a lot of people saying things about him that don't align with who he is or what he came to do. So I thought, well, why don't we go back to the source, uh, God's word, actually look at what God's word says and find out for ourselves who Jesus is. And so that's what we're going to do through Mark. And I like the gospel of Mark because I think for our generation that is so action-packed, um, action-oriented, we want things fast. Mark's gospel delivers that for us. And so we're going to do that. Behind everything, what I want you to know, our goal is to get to know Jesus. Because when we know him, we experience life. When we know him, we experience transformation. So if you're watching or listening, hey, this is for you. I hope it personally causes you to love Jesus more and therefore to live for him. But the other thing, and this is something I really believe the Lord's put on my heart, is that we are all, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, every one of us is called to make disciples. Literally, the reason I do these videos and podcasts is because the call on my life is to make disciples. But what I would love to see happen is that you are are using this content to disciple others, that you would be listening or watching, if you're watching on YouTube or listening on podcasts, that you would take this, bring someone along with you, have coffee, listen, and get to know Jesus together. And that this would be a way that when your friends or family members or coworkers want to know, hey, why are you a Christian? You know, that doesn't seem very cool that you have the language and the words to tell them how amazing Jesus is and exactly who he is and what he came to do and how he's such a revolutionary and that this is God coming to our rescue and that you would have the language and the words to be able to make disciples yourself. And so a lot of what I'm going to convey is hopefully 
helping you have really Christ-centered, gospel-centered conversations so that you can do the call on your life, which is to make disciples. Um, so let's dive in today. We're going to be in Mark chapter one, verse one. We're doing one verse today, people get, get excited. And it says the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. So there's several things here we're going to look at. First of all, the beginning. So he's starting right here of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. So I'm going to start by looking at the word gospel and really make sure we all understand what that means. But then let's look, he gives a title. He gives his name who we're talking about is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is his name. Christ is a title. It means the Messiah, the anointed one, the expected one. And then he goes on to say the son of God, let's not beat around the bush. Jesus is God. And the the gospel that we're going to be talking about is that God is here and he's on a rescue mission. So what is that word gospel? So that is pretty significant to even our study of Mark. Um, so the word gospel, it means or translates to us as the word good news. Now, this is a Roman term. And in that day and age, 2000 years ago, uh, the the Rome, the empire of Rome ruled the world. And they did that by conquering territories and they would conquer these different areas. And at that time, what they would do is they would send these proclaimers, these evangelists into this new area. They called them evangelists. And they would say, Hey, you have been set free. You have been, your area has been won and we are announcing good news to you. Okay. So it was called the gospel because it was good news that they were sending out. Well, when Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, when they began to uh, explain who Jesus is and what he had done and declare it to the world, they called it the gospel because that's what it is, that God has come to rescue us. And this is the best news of all time. And so why did Mark need to write this gospel? Because so when Jesus lived, he lived fully human on earth as our representative. He died a death that we should have died for sin, sin in this cosmic rebellion against God. Jesus took that for us, but he didn't just die. The cross was not the end. The resurrection happened. And there were over 500 witnesses to Jesus being alive. Now, these witnesses um, some were Jesus's very own disciples. Uh, we called them apostles. They went out spreading this news everywhere. Jesus has defeated sin and death and he is alive and put your hope in him. So they went out proclaiming that. And these 500 witnesses, literally, they could not be shut up because they knew what they had seen. They knew that the one they put their hope in not only took their sin on the cross, but he was alive. They saw him, they ate food with him. They touched his hands and feet. They were witnesses of this. And so they went out proclaiming this. And so after they went out proclaiming, the church begins to thrive and grow and grow and people begin to put their faith in Jesus. Well, meanwhile, the Roman empire hates this. Okay. And the, the, some of the Jewish leaders hate this. And so these early eyewitnesses, uh, and apostles in the early church, they began to get persecuted. And what that means is some of them are dying for their testimony that Jesus is alive and that Jesus did what he said he would do. And so some of the very most influential people like Peter, who uh, heard all Jesus's teachings, who was a pillar of the early church, who was um, an eyewitness to the miracles, the one who could testify to all of these things. He is martyred. He is crucified and um, he is sent to death for his faith in Jesus. So Mark, who is Peter's assistant, Peter's aide, he is what um, most scholars believe it would be Peter's translator in some areas. He was transcribing things for Peter. He wants to put down Everything that Peter taught about Jesus, everything Peter uh, conveyed in his sermons and his preachings about Jesus, he puts those down on paper. Okay. So the Holy Spirit uses this person, Mark, who we're going to talk about more in just a minute, to 
capture all of Peter's eyewitness accounts of who Jesus is and what he did and what he taught and how he's alive. He uses this young man named Mark to put that on paper so that you and I today, 2000 plus years later, can know Jesus and can follow Jesus and can love Jesus and be transformed by Jesus. It's pretty awesome, actually. Um, So just a little bit about what makes the gospel Mark unique, because um, if you're familiar with the Bible, you know, there are four different gospels. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And each one of those talk about Jesus from a different perspective. Now, Matthew is really concerned that we know that Jesus is the King. He is this long awaited Messiah that Israel has been hoping for. So Matthew is going to be talking to a very Jewish audience and explaining Jesus from that perspective. And then John he, he also uses a lot of Jewish references, but he starts at the very beginning of time and talks about Jesus being God, this eternal God who steps on earth. And so his perspective is not so much the king, but that Jesus is God in flesh. Okay. And then you have Luke who wants us to understand that Jesus is not just God. He's also human. And the reason that he can be our savior, he can be our perfect sacrifice is because he was like us. Okay. He was tempted in every way that we were tempted, but without sin. And so that's Luke's perspective. And then we hear, and we see Mark, who's going to really show us that, Hey, we have this divine rescuer who came and his rescue mission came in this form that he came and suffered and died for us. He is the suffering servant. So that's how Mark is going to uh, give us a picture of Jesus as the suffering servant who came to, um, to die for us. I was watching Instagram recently and there was this reel that came on and it was a reel of these four little boys about five years old and they were um, doing like a, a track meet or a race and they had some hurdles and the caption on the reel, it says, watch each kid keep watching. And so I watched for one time and I watched the first kid and watched the second. And it was funny because if you just looked at one kid, man, you, you missed what this other kid was doing. It was hysterical little video. I, when I watched that, I thought about the four gospels and how they work together individually, you see different parts of Jesus's life, or you see different parts of his character and who he is. But when you pull it together, all four give us this comprehensive, beautiful picture of the son of God, our Messiah, the suffering servant, the God in the flesh. And, and so, yes, they have different things that they talk about. They don't contradict each other. They really complement each other and show us the fullness of who Christ is. I want to talk a little bit um, just about who Mark is as the one that the Holy Spirit used to pen this gospel. Um, Although his name is not mentioned, uh, he is referred to and he's mentioned all throughout scripture and the early church, the early church fathers, the early church canons all just agreed that John Mark, who's written, who's referred to in the epistles and in the book of Acts, he is the author of this. Now, as I mentioned, John Mark, or we're going to call him Mark from now on, he based his writings on Peter's eyewitness testimony and Peter being an apostle and Peter being not only one of the 12 disciples, but part of Jesus's inner circle. He's one of the three. And so Jesus pulled Peter into his confidence. Uh, He was there in the garden of Gethsemane. He was there on the Mount of Transfiguration. So Peter shares with us so many things that only Peter and James and John were privy to. And so capturing his eyewitness account is so important. And that's why I believe the Holy Spirit used Mark to capture this for us so that we can have this up close and personal uh, look at who Christ is. Um, I want to take a second and show you the first time John Mark there we go again. I'm going to call him Mark is mentioned in scripture. And if you've been doing Bible study with me before, you know, that I think first mentions are very important because it kind of gives us a behind the scenes and a really a good way to see when scripture's talking about this person, uh, who are they? It's kind of given us their bio sketch first, if you will. So when we look at the person of Mark, uh, we need to go to the book of acts because the first time he is mentioned, there's kind of a big situation going down. 
Uh, Peter, as I said, who is the pillar of the early church, he is in Jerusalem. He is preaching. Jesus is alive. You need to repent, put your hope in him. He is the king of glory. And so he's doing this and he has angered uh, the religious mob in the city and he is being arrested. They want to shut him up. Okay. And so, as I said, Peter's testimony is pretty important. So while Peter's under arrest, the church back then, a church just met in a home because it was just a gathering of people. The church is not a building. The church is people. And so the early church was meeting in this home of a woman named Mary. Now it wasn't Mary, the mother of Jesus. This is Mary, a different woman. And it says that her son's name is John Mark. Now I want to read to you exactly what happens, because I think this moment was so influential in this young man's life that it changed the trajectory of his life and his in life purpose. So if you want to follow with me, I'm going to be in Acts chapter 12. In Acts chapter 12, I'm going to pick up at verse five and Peter is under arrest. He is in prison and the dude is not just in jail. Okay. There are layers to this jail. Let's look at it. Verse five, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping bound with chains between two soldiers and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. So he's behind bars. He is chained to two guards and he's behind locked doors. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. So angel of the Lord steps into the prison and doesn't wake the guards. Peter gets awoken, awakened, and he, his chains fall off. Okay. Then the angel said to him, gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so Peter did. And he said, put on your coat and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know what was done by the angel was real, but thought maybe he was seeing a vision. And when they were past the first and the second guard post, I love that. They came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose name was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Okay. That's an incredible story. I mean, angels setting you free from prison is just awesome. So you're Peter. You don't know if you're dreaming or you're seeing a vision. And then you realize this really happened. I not only got out of the cell where I was chained to two, two guards. I got through three levels of prison doors out there. And then the door to the the gate to the city just opens by itself. Okay. So now he goes to Mary's house, knocks on the door. He comes into the home where John Mark is there. Mary is there. And all of these people who have been praying for him are now listening to this story of what God just did. And so I imagine this young man named John Mark is just like, he is like, I am on team Jesus. Like whatever plans he had for his life before then, he's like, I have just seen God move in such a miraculous way. There is no denying it. And I'm going to commit my life to telling the world about Jesus. And so that's what he did. We know from church history and from reading the Bible that he went on a missionary tour with Paul and with Barnabas. He was part of that first missionary journey. We know that he was um, Peter's translator and transcriber. We know that when Paul was later in prison, John Mark was there with him, helping him. So this young man, he just cashed in his chips and said, I'm in for the gospel. So when fast forward later, when Peter, this apostle has been crucified for his testimony and faith, Mark is going to be sure that that testimony does not die with Peter. So he takes these sermons. He takes this message of what Jesus has done and who Jesus is. And by the power of the Holy spirit, he pins 
what we hold and what we call the gospel of Mark. Um, I really love the gospel of Mark. Um, it is, I think, such a great read for our modern generation. I believe it conveys the power of Jesus, uh, the person of Jesus, uh, the, the need for Jesus, and just then what he accomplished. And so if you want to get down to the point with people or and show them, hey, this is who Jesus is, you're going to have these incredible snapshots, incredible pictures uh, of Christ in the gospel of Mark. Um, one thing to keep in mind, as we talked about, every gospel has a different perspective. Mark is very much writing his gospel to people who are not of a Jewish background. And what I mean by that is maybe they weren't expecting this Jewish Messiah. Maybe they weren't looking for, uh, all the fulfillment of the signs in the Old Testament, like you would find in the Gospel of John. Um, and he's he's writing to people who are very much immersed in Roman culture. And so that's really good for you and I, because we can come to it with kind of fresh eyes. If you're not super um, exposed and knowledgeable of the Old Testament, you could start in the Gospel of Mark and still have a great understanding of who Jesus is. Uh, Mark uses Roman time rather than Jewish time. What does that, what I mean by that? So when he's calculating maybe like the time of the crucifixion or certain events, he's going to be doing that from a Roman perspective. Okay. So some people would say, oh, the Gospels contradict themselves. They don't. John, for example, is going to be writing from a Jewish perspective, so he will be using Hebrew time and Hebrew language. Mark, on the other hand, is writing to Romans, so he uses Roman time and a Roman perspective. He also writes in Latin, which was the language of the Roman people, and he will go into explain locations and places. If there's a location in Israel that's important to what Jesus is doing at the time, Mark's going to take the time to explain it. But also um, what we see in the gospel of Mark is that it's not filled with a ton of Old Testament references. I mean, we're going to look at in our next episode, one or two that are pretty important, but for the most part, it's not just a ton of Old Testament that you need to understand to really be able to dig into the gospel of Mark. So here's my joy. I love Jesus so much, but here's the thing. We grow in our love and knowledge of God by spending time in his word and actually seeing who he is and seeing um, how amazing he is and his power and his goodness and how he reveals the father to us. And so my prayer for you as we go through these episodes is that you would be Number one, reading the gospel of Mark for yourself, that you would stop and read it for yourself, spend time in the word, uh, let the word um, marinate in your heart, let Jesus really speak to your heart through the word, but also that you would not just hold this information for yourself, but you would share it with others. Every one of us is called to make disciples. You know, I'm here today because someone taught me about Jesus and you could be that someone in someone else's life. And the reason that they have hope, the reason they experience salvation, the reason that they come from darkness to light. So I pray as you just watch these videos or listen to this podcast for yourself, that it would inspire you to sit down with a friend, open the gospel of Mark, have a coffee and introduce them to the son of God.